Good morning, friends from Cashers, North Carolina. I hope you're doing well today. Glad you could join in for this time of prayer. I don't know if it's the morning of or later on the day or even the next day or two, but I'm glad you're here. And as always, like to, to know that you are here. Uh, give a like or a comment or something like that or even a prayer request. Happy to honor those and, and pray those. It's a foggy day out there, so we're not going to cast towards the valley. But let's do continue, as always, to center our hearts, and we'll begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who pours out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart or wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship thee in spirit and in truth, as you have said through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We read from the next part of Galatians, chapter 3. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly exhibited as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Having started with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Well then, God does God supply you with the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing works of the law or by your believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so, you see, those who believe are descendants of Abraham. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for The one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, as it is, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that Jesus Christ, that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle comes from Revelation chapter 4, the Song of the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore.
We continue reading from Matthew chapter 14. When Jesus heard that John had been beheaded by Herod, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard of it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go in the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of all the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides some women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it wasn't the feeding of the 5,000. I guess it's the feeding of the 7,000 or 10,000. Anyway, I always find that an interesting comment just to know, again, the abundance of God's grace and mercy for us through Christ. And let us now pray in the words that he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Three prayers today from the Collex. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and loving our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united one to another with hope, faith, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give those give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's end with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Great to be with you as always. Be well, be faithful, and I'll see you next time.